Both the right wing and centrist Democrats have been very critical of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, she, of course, defeated Joe Crowley in New York and is now a sitting member of the House of Representatives. So now they attack her a lot because she is young. She's 29 years old. She's Latina and she is deeply, deeply progressive. So those are things that the establishment cannot handle. And so recently, another hit piece against uh, Ocasio-Cortez has come from CNBC. Now, they apparently are calling her irresponsible because she doesn't have the um, right amount of savings for somebody her age. Now, CNBC had interviewed several financial planners for a story about her savings, uh, and they were very surprised, very shocked that a 29-year-old who was working as a bartender until February of this year didn't have at least $30,000 saved up in the bank. $30,000. I'm going to get to how insane that is. But first, here's her analysis. They said, Ocasio-Cortez's level of savings isn't bad, but based on her previous earnings, experts recommend that she should have between $8,750 and $30,000 put away for a crisis. They also recommend that she should have over $27,000 saved for retirement. And that, of course, is based on the logic that by the time you hit age 30, you should have a year's worth of salary put away. Wow. Now, CNBC also cited data from Fidelity. I showed that in order to save up enough money to have a year's salary put away, millennials should save up, uh, up to about 15% of each paycheck. Financial planners suggested the only reason this wasn't happening was because millennials were lazy, irresponsible, and they weren't setting a month monthly budget. Mm. Uh, one of the financial planners CNBC quoted said, ideally a 29 year old will have at least a few thousand dollars in a cash reserve and the equivalent of a year's salary in a retirement investment account. Uh, that is Paul Fain said of Ocasio-Cortez. Now, let me not be the first person to say this, but this is bullshit. The idea that millennials are irresponsible because we're not able to save $30,000 is ridiculous. I, I have $30,000 in student loans. <laughs> I don't have $30,000 in the bank. Uh, I have no savings right now. I'm kind of fucked economically, and I'm not the only one. I am not alone. In fact, look, I wish I had the $7,000 Ocasio-Cortez has. To, to be able to save up that much money, a lot of millennials are like, shit, I'd love to have that much money. <laughs> I don't know how she managed to do that in New York. She must be very responsible. Look, especially when you look at the data, right? Uh, showing how hard it is to actually save up a, 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 enough money. Now, in August, the Urban Institute published a report finding that 40% of Americans make so little that they frequently have to go without basic necessities like food, shelter, and health care. I don't have health care. I don't have health insurance. So how do you manage it, right? How do most Americans manage it? It turns out most Americans don't manage it. We can't because we end up getting paid so little. Now it gets worse. The Federal Reserve Board also discovered that nearly half of Americans can't even afford an unexpected $400 emergency expense without having to go into debt or sell some of their possessions. So these analysts that are ragging on Ocasio-Cortez for having only $7,000 saved at the bank, in, in the bank and not having $30,000 saved up are completely out of touch. 100% out of touch. Like, they don't know what the average person, the average working person actually goes through and has to contend with. But of course, uh, I have the information on that. But first... I just want to contrast those two pieces of data with what happened around the same time um, that this report came out. In that same amount of time, second quarter corporate profits ended up hitting another record high. Hmm, corporate profits are up, and yet half of Americans don't have enough money to uh, satisfy basic necessities, right? 
and can't afford a $400 emergency. That's not an accident. Those things happen in relation to each other. They go hand in hand. The more corporate profits rise, the more money gets hoarded at the top, the less goes to you. It's not a coincidence. People are not getting paid a living wage. We're, we're not getting what we put in with work. We are the most productive in history. And yet we get none of that. Not only that, but people have huge amounts of college debt. And of course, some live in areas where the cost of living is extremely high and they're getting gentrified out of the area. Not only that, but you have wage theft. I want to show you a graphic here about wage theft. Um, it really shows how terrible that practice really is and how much Americans lose from it. Um, wage theft. It turns out that in 2012, wage theft accounted to $933 million. That's more than just people getting mugged, people getting robbed. $933 million. That's how much the corporations are stealing from you. They're taking it from you and putting it back into their own pockets. That is horrific. It is disastrous. Um, not only that, but you had wages, as I said, not keeping up with productivity. Thanks to the Reagan administration who started the trend of union busting. He's very, very, he was very, very anti-worker. And I'm going to show you what happened when that started happening and when money got involved in politics. Look at this. Pay rose with productivity, 1947 to 1979. Right as Ronald Reagan got into office, you had the Great Regression. You had compensation, wages that have flatlined. Oh, but look at that, corporate profits. Corporate profits increased, productivity increased, but yet workers were just not getting their fair share. And that unfortunately started with money in politics and Ronald Reagan and trickle-down economics, voodoo economics, and we're still unfortunately suffering under that system today. And so, look, you had, again, to go back to union busting, you know unions have almost no power and influence now. Thanks to Ronald Reagan. And so by the time millennials got into the workforce, guess what? We faced jobs that had subpar wages and no benefits. Now, I was very lucky when I was younger to actually get into a job that was a union job. I was paid $13 an hour and I actually had decent benefits. I had health care. Uh, I had dental care. I had all this nice stuff. Vision. That job, well, that job ended up getting, of course, uh, shut down because they wanted to shut it down, outsource it, or bring it back with lower pay. And that's what happened to a lot of manufacturing jobs. Now jobs, uh, and, and this is 13 years later, come back getting paid $11 an hour with very, very skinny benefit packages, if any. So that's what's happening here in America, that is what's happened. We are in a race to the bottom. And look, we don't have union representation anymore. That's what happens. We have right to work. That's what happens. It ends up being you have the right to work, but you have the right to work for less. Reagan is probably one of the most destructive presidents in history. And that, look, when it comes to the middle class, he's the most destructive. But when it comes to the wealthy, he is, uh, to them, a hero because for obvious reasons, uh, his policies of cutting taxes for the rich help them immensely. Now, there's more. As Axios reported back in July, the median income for 30-year-olds in 1977, and this shows how we have not kept up uh, with that, was about $34,000 a year. Now, that was $2,833 a month before taxes. That average, that median income for a 30-year-old, is unchanged in 2016. When adjusted for inflation, 
$34,000 in December of 1977 is equal to about $132,184 in December of 2016 dollars. That is $11,000 a month. Now, unfortunately, nowadays, it, our pay did not get adjusted for inflation. Our job did not keep up with inflation, did not keep up with productivity. So we're not out there making $11,000 a year, most of us. We're still making $34,000 a year. Now, it's obviously much easier to stick away $30,000 if you're making over $130,000 a year. Not so much if you're still making the 30. And those who can, look, I got to point out, by the way, location makes a, a big difference. Now, for example, where I live, $130,000, man, you're living the dream. But in New York, in LA, it's not that great. So, uh, and these are areas that have been heavily gentrified. And so the cost of living is just insane. Now, I have more data, like, for example, rent. Uh, now, data from Statista shows that the monthly median rent for an unfurnished apartment in the United States in 1980 was about $300, uh, $308 a month. Now, adjusted for inflation, it's about $981 in today's dollars, right? But in 2017, that figure, how much rent is, is just shy of about $1,500 per month. And of course, in New York, LA, it's double that. So it just shows that rent is even far more expensive in today's dollars than it was before for an unfurnished apartment. Now, let's go to childcare. Childcare costs for both in-home and in-center childcare have also climbed to an average of about uh, of $1,385 for parents who need someone to look after their kids while they work. So that leads to the situation, by the way, where you're just working to pay for childcare and you're not getting ahead. You're basically running in place. More economic stagnation. That is almost as much as the median rent of $1,500 a month. For single parents, it gets worse. Childcare can eat up, uh, eat up as much as about 40% of annual take-home pay. To put these numbers in context, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says that childcare shouldn't cost more than 7% of a parent's income. And yet, for a single parent, it can eat up nearly half of your income for childcare alone. There is a problem here in America. There is a huge problem. So you put all of those different factors together and you should start to understand why so many people just don't have the ability to save. And of course, student loans, right? I mentioned the average student loan is somewhere around thirty-two to $34,000. And the average payments are about $575 a month. That's more money... Um, that people just don't have. And so, look, people try to save. We try to do the right thing. We put off parenthood, marriage, home ownership, vacations, v vacations. Never had a vacation in my life. And all those things, you put those away. And even by the time we're in our 30s, we're still not able to do any of that stuff. We don't have anything to show for it except for more student loan debt. So, but hey, we're the irresponsible ones, according to CNBC. Millennials. And I'm still part of the millennial generation. And uh, that's the reality that we live in. And we're getting blamed for being born into an economic system that has been rigged to benefit the extremely wealthy and extremely connected at our expense. And here you have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wanting to fix that system, wanting to put in place policies that will actually reverse this trend, that will allow people to have health care, allow people to have affordable rent, affordable child care, things like that. Good jobs, well-paying jobs. 
that pay a living wage. And yet she is attacked by the people, the very people who benefit from this absolutely rigged system. CNBC and their so-called experts are not only so completely disconnected to the reality of average Americans, but are in themselves a complete joke. Their advice is a joke and their joke. And unfortunately, nobody's laughing. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.